Hey, it's Ryan Moody here, helping you to fish smarter, not harder. In this week's blog post, I'm going to show you how I set up my immediate tackle system on the boat. This is my inshore boat for barra fishing. Um, we use it for not just the barra fishing side of things, but we also use it inshore chasing all kinds of pelagics, golden trevallies, spaniards, uh, all that sort of thing as well, and finger mark, coral trout. Um, so I do get quite often asked about all the kind of things that I use and that, that kind of stuff so we thought we might just show you what I keep ready for my for my immediate needs um, in the barrow boat. Uh, first off we're going to start off with the, um, the tackle box. This is a Plano model that I've been using for years actually. It's, it hasn't changed much over the years, it's, it's pretty much stayed the same. Uh, it's got a nice big open area in the top there. I look, keep all my basic stuff up here that I'm most likely going to use uh, during the day, no matter what I'm doing. Things typical like a, a knife, your lip grips, snips for your braid and leader, uh, other basic items, you know, hook sharpening stones. Um, also, I usually comp my commonly so uh, used leader that I'm going to use on the day. I'll keep a roll of that in, in here. In this case, it's the Pen um, Pro Power 10 by. It's a nice little, very thin leader for 60 pound and it's uh, pretty much invisible underwater. So I like to keep that readily accessed up the top here. Uh, although I do have other leader elsewhere in the boat if I need a heavier leader or something like that. Um, I like to keep uh, a range of live bait hooks here. I don't live bait a hell of a lot these days, but um, I keep to my two common sizes for inshore, whether it's barra uh, down to things like uh, finger mark. So I keep the two common sizes. Now these are the Eagle Claw Carlys laser sharps. Um, these are the six O's. I also keep a, a box of eight O's as well. Um, so I keep them handy in the top here in case I need to use them. Uh, also keep my handheld VHF nice and handy ready to go and also probably the most important tool I think you'll ever use out fishing and it pays to put a few pennies aside especially if you get out to those out of way places a fair bit having a sat phone because if you've got no mobile reception and your VHF is either a handheld and there's no repeater or you just you can't get reception anywhere um, things can get a bit difficult so sat phones are great um, it's the best tool I keep in my tackle box. So that's basically up the top there. You can keep your mobile phone in there as well, out of the rain. Um, so it's nice and handy. All those uh, bigger ticket items, very handy to store up there. Uh, now on the front here, it has the four drawers. Um, I keep things like uh, a lot of my trolling lures, bigger lures and excess barrel lures, some that, some that dive a bit deeper than others. These are the ones I use on occasion, so I keep a readily su supply of them up here, um, including the um, that's the uh, the scorpions. They've been a great trolling lure over the years, and of course the the, uh, the strata terrors. Uh, also, this drawer here, I keep my commonly used plastics for a variety of things I'm most likely to encounter. Of course, all my big barra stuff, um, squid imitations. If I'm inshore fishing the wonky holes for big reds, I like to use the, the Berkeley Power Bait. Um, they're a fantastic plastic out there for those bigger reef fish. Uh, a few smaller plastics as well, which are good for things like finger mark. Now remember, you've got to keep your plastics separate. That's why I've got all the, the same kinds in the same areas. Do not mix them up because a lot of the plastics interact. And you can open it up one day and you've just got a huge blob of uh, rubber sitting in the middle of your tackle box. So keep all your plastics uniform in the right areas. Um, so I, I like to keep a, a variety of those readily accessible. Uh, next up in this drawer I keep a lot of my favourite barramundi casting lures that I'm going to have readily accessible at any time. Uh, all my shallow diving lures there. Um, I uh, use different colours for different times, um, stick baits, that kind of thing for when I'm surface luring the surface. I like to keep my hooks nice and handy there as well, from trolling lures right down to small vibes. Um, the most commonly used jig heads uh, that I use, um, half ounce, three quarter ounce in the five to seven O sizes, and also a couple of my uh, most commonly used sizes of uh, split rings. Uh, these lures here of the uh, Dave Killerley's uh, Old Dog Lures, new uh, Gutter Master 100. They're fantastic lures. And one of my favourite stick baits is uh, the Reedy's. They're great little lures too. Um, okay, that's pretty much that drawer. 
And the final remaining one, I do like to keep pretty much basically my knickknacks. I keep things like bait jigs, um, a spare barotrauma needle, spare live bait hooks, circle hooks, shackles, um, uh, all your fuses, different kinds of fuses for different units and, and the system. Uh, in case I quickly do a little bit of pelagic fishing in shore, I've got things like gar springs ready to go to make up a, a gar rig. Um, just spare, you know, snap swivels, small crane swivels, that kind of thing. Um, and also, I do keep a roll of wire usually sitting in the top there as well in case I decide to go and fish for some Spaniards. So that's basically a knick-knack drawer where I keep all those little things that you, you never know you're gonna, you might need. Also, a couple of metal slices in there too, uh, different sizes, uh, simply because, um, you know, Spaniards like the bigger ones and your Northern Blues and your Mac Tuna like the smaller ones. Sometimes if you're coming home from a barrow trip across the bay, you might see a school of tuna and you're going up the reef the following weekend. Well, it pays to pull up, flick a small slice in amongst them and catch yourself some really nice fillet bait for the reef. Saves you killing those little fish out the reef and saves on your bait bill as well. And you've got top class bait. So that's one thing I always like to keep handy, ready to go, is a couple of metal slices. Okay, well that pretty much covers my immediate tackle. So I've got a whole bunch of bases covered there from barra fishing, other species in shore, threadfin, finger mark, um, plus the pelagics as well. And if I'm going out to the wonky holes, I've got some bigger lures, bigger hooks and that kind of thing as well. Now that's how I like to keep my immediate tackle needs, all in one spot, nice and neat, not all around the boat everywhere. But also, I do bring other lures for different applications that I don't commonly use, some different sizes, all that kind of thing, uh, other plastics and vibes and, and spares of what I've got in here too. And I like to keep them up the front here, um, out of the salt water. Simply keep them up the front there, out of harm's way. Just more trolling lures, more barrel lures, and so on, so on. So that's if I need to get into that kind of stuff, I just go up there and access it. But most of the stuff I'm going to use is out here on the deck ready to go. So I hope you enjoyed that little tour of my tackle box and how I set myself up for inshore fishing. Uh, I hope a lot of you beginners out there get something from it and are able to help yourselves uh, get set up a bit better. So if you like this little tip, and you'd like to see more, subscribe to our YouTube channel, like us on Facebook, and if you only want some special tips I send out via email only, head on over to our website www.ryanmoodyfishing.com and sign up for free email updates. Get into the great outdoors, keep fishing smarter, and I'll see you next time.